Hello, my sweet summer children. I'm back with the juice to get you through the long night. The long night is almost over and Game of Thrones season eight is getting close. Today, we are going back to the dream series. We're like revisiting that. I'll link the dream series above so you can watch that playlist. It's a lot of good videos on there, a lot of good juice. So because of the trailer and the way things are looking, I wanted to revisit the weirwood dream of Jamie Lannister. I believe this dream combined with evidence from the trailer shows what's going to go down with Jamie Lannister in season eight. So get your tissues out, also your popcorn, because this might be a long one. So let's talk about the Kingslayer. Jamie Lannister is one of my favorite characters, especially in the books. And his weirwood dream in the books leads to one of the defining moments in Jamie Lannister's character arc. When Jamie Lannister leaves Harrenhal on his way back to King's Landing, he falls asleep on a weirwood stump and has a very, very prophetic dream. This dream is indeed prophetic in nature and some part of this dream have already happened. So let's get started. Around him stood a dozen tall, dark figures in cowled robes that hid their faces. In their hands were spears. Who are you? He demanded of them. What business do you have in Casterly Rock? They gave no answer, only prodded him with points of their spears. He had no choice but to descend. Down a twisting passageway he went, narrow steps carved from the living rock, down and down. I must go up, he told himself, up, not down. Why am I going down? Below the earth his doom awaited. He knew with the certainty of the dream. Something dark and terrible lurked there. Something that wanted him. Jamie tried to halt, but their spears prodded him on. If only I had my sword, nothing could harm me. The steps ended abruptly on echoing darkness. Jamie had the sense of vast space before him. He jerked to a halt, teetering on the edge of nothingness. A spear point jabbed at the small of the back, shoving him into the abyss. He shouted, but the fall was short. He landed on his hands and knees upon soft sand and shallow water. There were watery caverns deep below Casterly Rock, but this one was strange to him. What place is this? Your place, the voice echoed. It was a hundred voices, a thousand, the voices of all the Lannisters since Lan the Clever, who'd lived at the dawn of days. But most of all, it was his father's voice. And beside Lord Tywin stood his sister, pale and beautiful, a torch burning in her hand. Joffrey was there as well, the sun they'd made together, and behind them a dozen more dark shapes with golden hair. So we have Jamie Lannister dreaming, seeing his ancient ancestors. They are prodding him down a twisting passageway of narrow steps. Jamie knows of watery caverns below Casterly Rock, but Jamie thinks he's in Casterly Rock. But this place is strange to him because this place isn't Casterly Rock. This place is likely the Crypts of Winterfell. The entrance of the Crypts of Winterfell is described the same way as this place. The way was narrow and steep, the steps worn in the center by centuries of feet. They went down to the crypt together, Ned and this king he scarcely recognized. The winding stone steps were narrow, and then I find myself in the front door of the crypts. It's black inside and I can see the steps spiraling down. Jamie, not recognizing the place, points to it not being Casterly Rock. And what Jamie sees is very, very similar to the entrance of the crypts of Winterfell. But let's continue. Sister, why has father brought us here? Us? This is your place, brother. This is your darkness. Her torch was the only light in the cavern. Her torch was the only light in the world. She turned to go. Stay with me, Jamie pleaded. Don't leave me here alone. But they were leaving. Don't leave me in the dark. Something terrible lived down here. Give me a sword at least. I gave you a sword, Lord Tywin said. It was at his feet. Jamie groped under the water until his hand closed upon the hilt. This is the first huge clue that this dream is indeed prophetic in nature. This dream occurs before Jamie rescues Brienne from Harrenhal. So this occurs way before Tywin has even given Jamie Oathkeeper. This occurs before ice is even melted down and made into two swords. Nothing can hurt me as long as I have a sword. 
As he raised the sword, a finger of pale flame flickered at the point and crept up along the edge, stopping a hand's breadth from the hilt. The fire took on the color of the steel itself, so it burned with a silvery blue light, and the gloom pulled back, crouching, listening. Jamie moved in a circle, ready for anything that might come out of the darkness. This is also a clue that Jamie will be fighting in the front lines during the long night, and more specifically, inside the crypts of Winterfell. The water flowed into his boots, ankle deep and bitterly cold. Beware the water, he told himself. There may be creatures living in it, hidden deeps. From behind came a great splash. Jamie whirled toward the sound, but the faint light revealed only Brienne of Tarth, her hands bound in heavy chains. I swore to keep you safe, the wench said stubbornly. I swore an oath. Naked, she raised her hands to Jamie. Sir, please, if you would be so good. The steel links parted like silk. A sword, Brienne begged, and there it was scabbard, belt, and all. She buckled it around her thick waist. The light was so dim that Jamie could scarcely see her, though they stood a scant few feet apart. In this light, she could almost be a beauty, he thought. In this light, she could almost be a knight. Brienne's sword took flame as well, burning silvery blue. Jamie and Brienne now both have swords, Widow's Whale and Oathkeeper. This is prior to Jamie giving Oathkeeper to Brienne and prior to Jamie having Widow's Whale. This is how you know this is prophetic. Also, the silver blue light lets you know that it's ice. What color is actual literal ice? Silvery blue. Also, ice is Valyrian steel and can be used to defeat the White Walkers. So this is prophetic that Brienne and Jaime will fight the White Walkers. But there is more prophecy in this dream to come. The darkness retreated a little more. The flames will burn so long as you live, he heard Cersei call. When they die, so must you. Sister, he shouted, stay with me, stay. There was no reply but the soft sound of retreating footsteps. Jamie begs Cersei to keep her word in season seven, to ride north and help Jon and Daenerys defeat the army of the dead, but she doesn't, and they separate. Jamie rides north and Cersei stays in King's Landing. Brienne moved her long sword back and forth, watching the silvery flame shift and shimmer. Beneath her feet, a reflection of the burning blade shone on the surface of the flat black water. So this flat black water is a huge clue. This is another hint that it's Winterfell. In the Winterfell Godswood, in front of the heart tree is a pool of black water still that shows reflections. Here is that black pool in the Godswood's description. At the heart of the Godswood, the great white weirwood brooded over its reflection in the black pool. So this seems like another clue. This is not Casterly Rock, but it is Winterfell and more specifically the Crypts of Winterfell. She was as tall and strong as he remembered, yet it seemed to Jamie that she had more of a woman's shape now. Do they keep a bear down here? Brienne was moving, slow and wary, sword to hand, step, turn, and listen. Each step made a little splash. A cave lion, direwolves, some bear. Tell me, Jamie, what lives here? What lives in this darkness? Doom. No bear, he knew. No lion, only doom. This is another clue that this dream is prophetic. Brienne asks if a bear is in there. We know that after this dream, Jamie rescues Brienne from the bear. But she says a lion, a bear, a direwolf. Why a direwolf? Well, because they are in the crypts of Winterfell. Jamie says only Doom lives in this darkness. No bear, no lion. But he never says no direwolf. So there are direwolves down there. And it is true that only the dead live in this darkness, the dead of House Stark. But Jamie's doom awaits him down here in the crypts of Winterfell as well. In the cool silvery blue light of the swords, the big wench looked pale and fierce. I mislike this place. I'm not fond of it myself. Their blades made a little island of light, but all around them stretched a sea of darkness, unending. My feet are wet. We could go back the way they brought us. If you climbed on my shoulders, you'd have no trouble reaching that tunnel mouth. Then I could follow Cersei. He could feel himself growing hard at the thought and turned away so Brienne would not see. Listen, she put a hand on his shoulders and he trembled at the sudden touch. She's warm. Something comes. Brienne lifted her sword to point off to his left. There, 
He peered into the gloom until he saw it too. Something was moving through the darkness. He could not quite make it out. A man on a horse. No, two, two riders side by side. Down here? Beneath the rock? It made no sense. Yet there came two riders on pale horses, men in mounts both armored. The Destriers emerged from the blackness at a slow walk. They make no sound, Jamie realized. No splashing, no clink of mail, nor clop of hoof. He remembered Eddard Stark riding the length of Eris's throne room, wrapped in silence. Only his eyes had spoken, a lord's eyes, cold and gray and full of judgment. Is it you, Stark? Jamie called. Come ahead. I never feared you living. I do not fear you dead. So Jamie sees the ghost of Ned Stark, his judgment, his judgmental gray eyes. Well, it would make sense that Jamie is in the crypts with Ned Stark statues and the dead of House Stark. Brienne touched his arm. There are more. He saw them too. They were armored all in snow, it seemed to him, and ribbons of mist swirled back from their shoulders. The visors of their helms were closed, but Jaime Lannister did not need to look upon their faces to know them. Five had been his brothers. Oswell Wentz and John Derry, Lewin Martell, a Prince of Dorne, the White Bull, Gerald Hightower, Sir Arthur Dane, Sword of the Morning, and beside them, crowned in mist and grief, with his long hair streaming behind him, rode Rhaegar Targaryen, Prince of Dragonstone and rightful heir to the Iron Throne. You don't frighten me, he called, turning as they split to either side of him. He did not know which way to face. I will fight you one by one or all together. But who is there for the wench to duel? She gets cross when you leave her out. I swore an oath to keep him safe, she said to Rhaegar's shade. I swore a holy oath. We all swore oaths, said Sir Arthur Dane so sadly. The shades dismounted from their ghostly horses. When they drew their long swords, it made not a sound. He was going to burn the city, Jamie said, to leave Robert only ashes. He was your king, said Derry. You swore to keep him safe, said Went. And the children, them as well, said Prince Lewin. Prince Rhaegar burned with a cold light, now white, now red, now dark. I left my wife and children in your hands. I never thought he'd hurt them. Jamie's sword was burning less brightly now. I was with the king, killing the king, said Sir Arthur. Cutting his throat, said Prince Lewin. The king you had sworn to die for, said the white bull. The fires that ran along the blade were guttering out, and Jamie remembered what Cersei had said. No, terror closed the hand about his throat. Then his sword went dark and only Brienne's burned as the ghosts came rushing in. Okay, so in this dream, Jamie is literally killed by dead men armored in snow inside the crypts of Winterfell. Jamie and Brienne are side by side fighting the dead. That's the big takeaway. But he is confronted by his brothers of the King's Guard about the breaking of his oaths. And in particular, not protecting Rhaegar's wife and children. Yeah, they are mad about him killing King Aerys, but when Rhaegar's children are brought up, Rhaegar begins to burn with cold light, white, red, now dark. He says, I left my wife and children in your hands. Jamie says, I never thought he'd hurt them. And his sword light starts to not be as bright anymore. So this is huge. In the trailer, we have Jamie in Winterfell. Jamie looks to be giving a speech to everyone in Winterfell's Great Hall about keeping his promise to fight for the living. And we actually see that Jamie is in this battle at Winterfell. Now, Jamie's sword has just fluttered when Rhaegar accuses him of not protecting his children and killing the king. So Jamie now has an opportunity not only to keep his oath, but to protect Rhaegar's son, Jon Snow. Not only is that Rhaegar's son, but that is also the rightful heir to the Iron Throne. By the looks of the trailer, Winterfell is going to lose. The one saving grace, though, is the Crypts of Winterfell. The Crypts of Winterfell are magic. They're the oldest part of Winterfell with tons of hidden passageways all throughout Winterfell. I believe a lot will escape through the Crypts, kind of like how Bran escapes from Blood Raven's cave. I believe it will be in the Crypts that Jaime will be killed by the Army of the Dead while fighting side by side with Brienne. 
Jamie will die before Brienne. Brienne will actually see him die. Jamie will sacrifice himself to protect Rhaegar's son, John. Maybe like how Hodor sacrificed himself for Bran, but Jamie has always said that he wants to die in the arms of the woman he loves. And the woman that he loves is not Cersei. Cersei is now a monster to Jamie. The woman he loves, the woman that changed him was Brienne. So I don't know if Brienne dies side by side with Jamie, if Jamie dies in her arms, if she pulls Jamie out, but he still dies. I'm not sure. But I think that's how it's going to go down. And I do think it will happen in the crypts. So according to the teaser, there's this clue that the Night King will make it into the crypts. And I believe he may raise the Stark Kings. And Jaime will have to fight while the others try to escape. When you actually think about it, it's like an atonement. He promised to fight for the living. He promised Catelyn Stark to find her daughters and to protect them. He promised Rhaegar to protect his children. He will die fulfilling all of these oaths in the most sacred place of House Stark. He will die a hero. He will die having atoned for all the oaths that he's broken. But what do you think? As always, thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone that supports me on Patreon. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please click that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and join the Sweet Summer family. Okay, my sweet summer children, have a good day.